Well, half the population will menstruate in their lifetime and one in two women will struggle with their monthly cycles. We are joined by naturopathic doctor Lara Bryden, who's written a book to give women the knowledge they need to improve their period health. Morning to you. Hi. It is really lovely to have you in the studio. So what made you think there was a need for this book first up? In my practice, I was seeing women every day who would say things to me like, I'd really like to get off the pill because of the side effects, but I need it for my skin or my period mm. pain or other period problems. And Mel, I basically just thought, right, that's it. Women deserve better. Women deserve to know that there are other options for periods and it's really not that complicated. Right, and, and this is the thing is that all women have these conversations when they're in groups. Yeah. Were you surprised by what women don't know about their periods? I think one of the things that women, many women, and even some doctors don't seem to understand is that we need a regular natural monthly cycle to make hormones, to make the hormones that we need for general health. Mm -hmm. For example, estrogen and progesterone are good for mood and brain and um, bones and heart health and yet unfortunately the steroid drugs in hormonal birth control are not as good as our own hormones. What I always say is we need to make our hormones not take them. So what are the most common things that can go wrong for women with their monthly cycles? One of the most common things is to not get a cycle, not get a period or to not get a regular period and that can happen for different reasons of course. That can happen because of stress or not eating enough. Um, another common reason to not get a period is a hormonal condition called polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS right. which I know some of your viewers know all about because it affects one in ten women and it causes irregular periods but also problems with weight gain and bad skin. So these are things that this is obviously one in ten that's a really common problem. It is. It's it, terrifying. It's a big part of my book as you can imagine the PCOS. <laughs> yeah. So what about what about exercise because obviously diet will affect things. What about exercise? Um, too much exercise means the body needs more food mm -hmm. and if you're not able to keep up, keep up with more food then yes athletes can lose their period. That's a, a kind of a well-known problem that scientists are looking into and trying to find ways to prevent that. So what about diet? I mean that obviously affects our period then diet has a huge effect on our periods. So one of the things we just mentioned is yeah. not eating enough um, and losing a period. That can happen with athletes. That can also happen with a number of the young women I'm seeing in my practice who are trying a low carb or a keto diet and six months into it they're losing their period. Right, it's very on trend at the moment those it's diets very, aren't they? And it, it, it's, it's quite concerning actually because I, I see it quite often with my patients. And so women that young shouldn't be losing their periods should they? None of us should be losing yeah. our periods until menopause. Mm. You know, we need our periods to be healthy. That's why I call our periods our monthly report card. So what about, <laughs> what about if you eat too much then? Does that affect things? It, only in certain circumstances, certainly eating perhaps too much sugar can be a driving factor in PCOS that mm. I mentioned earlier. So in that, that group of women might need to look at ways to maybe reduce sugar to help to normalize the hormonal issues that are affecting their periods. So obviously a woman's cycle does change throughout her life doesn't yes. it? So what should what should women in their 40s be doing differently? What should they be noticing? Yeah so what happens in our 40s is we can make we make more estrogen than we used to up to three times more which is a bit crazy when you think about it mm. and at the same time we make a lot less progesterone. So that combination of high estrogen and low progesterone can cause symptoms like insomnia, mood swings and very heavy periods. Right so sometimes you might just think that you're you becoming grumpy as you age but that's not necessarily the case. No actually women during what's called perimenopause which is our 40s which is the 10 years leading up to menopause we're at three times higher risk of anxiety and depression. Wow. Because of that hormonal shift. Because it's all about the hormones. But yeah hormones are a good thing I don't like to make them sound like a bad thing. <laughs> so what about for women in the 40s what should they be doing or what can they do to sort of level things out. Good question. So some of the strategies I discuss in my book are just ways to stabilize the nervous system generally through that transition that requires the supplement magnesium which can be really helpful. I also provide my patients and I discuss in the book ways to nutritional supplements to reduce estrogen which can actually help with some of those mood changes and for some of my patients that have tougher symptoms like very heavy flooding mm. periods I ask them to speak to their doctor about a natural progesterone capsule called Prometrium or in, a, in New Zealand it's called Eutrogestin which can dramatically lighten periods and doesn't have the side effects of other things like the hormonal IUD. There's so many things you've got to, um, you've got to factor in isn't there? Yeah. What about with our children? What should we be teaching our young girls about the periods? I think just the point that I made at the beginning, which is that we, our natural, regular menstrual cycles are a healthy thing. It's how we make hormones. Mm -hmm. We want that to happen. It's how we're going to be healthy in the long term. With your monthly period, should you be in pain? Should you expect some, some level of pain? Very good question. I'm going to say no. 
pain is... Women severe. out there everywhere are going, uh, excuse me, we've got something to say about that. Severe pain is never normal. Mm -hmm. Severe pain can be a sign that there's something concerning going on, something like endometriosis or adenomyosis. These are a couple of conditions I discuss in my book and say, please speak to your doctor and, and decide to figure out if that's going on. But even for the more milder run-of-the-mill pain, my view is for most of us, we can reach the point where we don't suffer that. Really, and for most of us, I think we probably have <laughs> suffered that at some stage yeah, in our lifetime. Sure. Well, that's really great advice. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Lara's, Lara's book is available at all good bookstores. It sounds like we have to read it. <laughs>